The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hey everyone, this is episode 10 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I'm Craig Williams. And I'm Sean Thompson. And uh, today we're going to spend a little bit of time getting back to basics. Back to basics. That was uh, less corny when I wrote it. No. It's pretty corny in person. It, it, it's still just as corny. <laughs> okay. I can promise you. That's why. Uh, no, it's, it's even more than when I wrote it. Whatever it you want It was the delivery. Say. Yeah. I mean, I, it took a while to, uh, to approve this idea. <laughs> okay. At, at least at least one to two hours, but no, it's a good idea. It is. So, um, yeah, that's that's going to be our topic tonight is back to basics. Mm-hmm. But uh, before then, we've, we've got a lot of updates. A lot of stuff is happening at Universal because we, we keep seeing, saying this every week and every other week. Uh, well, we and say I'm it not, even when there's not a Universal show. Yeah. Yeah. We just... We just announce it to anyone who's listening. We kind of do this every Tuesday, yeah. regardless of whether or not it goes out for people to see, which... <laughs> It might be embarrassing on our part. But it's really yeah. embarrassing. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it's it's what's well, it's us. But uh, yeah. All right. So do you, do you want to shall start we start? With the yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. I think we should start with City Walk, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think there's a couple things that have opened in City Walk. Yeah. That we're pretty excited about. One that's not so great. I mean, it's still fine. But the number one is Menchie's. Menchie's. Absolutely. Menchie's. So. Uh, for a lot of people who don't know what Menchie's is, if you haven't had it in your neck of the woods yet, it is a frozen yogurt-based store that uh, it comes from <laughs> California. The store the, is, in fact, yogurt, frozen yogurt-based. The whole <laughs> store is. <laughs> yes, it's based off of yeah. frozen yogurt. No, it's glorious. It's uh, You walk in, and you can get these tiny cups for sampling, and they're basically mm-hmm. the cups that the dentist uses to put your toothpaste in. Are you familiar with the... Those little cups? I haven't been to the dentist in, in like years. five years. All right. Well, that's what no. they use. They're these little white cups that you can sample the different flavors. And mm-hmm. then there's a wall of frozen yogurt machines. And they come in two pairs. There, there's pairs. Yeah. So there's a left and a right. And then a centered where you can do swirl. Yeah. And they change them out. So there's seasonal ones. Like pumpkin is my favorite. Mm-hmm. But then there's like fruit ones and, you know, chocolate ones and peanut butter ones. They're all amazing. Well, first off, thanks for interrupting me whenever I was talking about that it comes from California. Okay, yeah, go ahead with the history, I mean, but that's the boring part. People want to hear about the food. That's not. That's where, I mean, you're going to find the most menchies in California. They have some, I actually didn't know that. Well, now you know. Yeah. They have some in Florida, like in Dr. Phillips, the wonderful land in Dr. Phillips. <laughs> in California. Um, yes, Dr. Phillips, California. Yeah. But uh, they're all over the place now. It's really, really fresh, um, really fresh frozen yogurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're really big on gluten-free products. Sure. And just uh, all that healthy stuff that makes ice cream a little better for That's you. That's the part I ignore. I, I said, I know I held it behind my computer, but I said Yeah, ice they need cream to see your air quotes. quotes. Yeah. So, because it's not ice cream, but it's absolutely delicious. And uh, oh. they, they rotate their flavors daily. So you might not see the same thing. So one big thing they started uh, incorporating in is the pineapple Dole Whip. Sure. Because as, as much people think that it's a Disney thing, Disney doesn't own the pineapple soft serve ice cream. You're right. That's that's a Dole product <clears throat> mm-hmm. that anyone can technically use as long as they make it the correct way. Exactly. And, and Menchie's decided to go through the the gauntlet and learn how to do it and <laughs> the in- intensive training process although i've never even had it in menchie's i've seen it in menchie's but it, it just i haven't seen it in menchie's actually I, but i'm excited too because they they announced that they will have it at this oh, yeah. one but and it's like like every other flavor it's rotating so i'd be there i, I think it's brilliant that they're doing that uh yeah. the fact that now people can go to universal and get a pineal d- pineapple dual whip i mean yeah that, that's why some people specifically go to the Magic Kingdom. People will go to Universal just for the Dole Whip. Yeah, I don't but even... But check first. They have a Twitter They have a Twitter account, so that you might be do. able to ask them if they have... They do. They do what? They do have a Twitter they account. They do. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you can maybe ask them before you make the trip j- just for the Pineapple Dole Whip. However, you know, it, it's still worth checking out anyways. Well, can you... we talk about the Toppins Bar? So sure. after you... I mean, not to get into too much detail about Menchie's, but after you get your flavors, they have a huge Toppings Bar with fruit and good stuff. They have mm-hmm. candy and sprinkles and... I don't know, peanut butter cups and everything you can imagine. Boba. 
Okay, those are the balls that... Yeah, they're the balls that burst in your mouth. <laughs> okay. They're in boba tea. All right. Yeah, but they're like... All right, just finish. <laughs> they're, they're delicious. You have fruit. Um, I, I seem to always gravitate towards the cheesecake pieces. Yeah. So no matter what I get, if I get cookies and cream, it ends up being cookies and cream with cheesecake, <laughs> cheesecake. pieces and then a dollop of whipped cream. Or if everything, I get, everything ends in whipped cream. If I get banana, I get cheesecake pieces and a dollop of whipped exactly. cream. Exactly. Like vanilla wafers, you make like a banana pudding. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just love cheesecake pieces. I know. They're really good. They're and amazing. they have like dark chocolate peanut butter cups. The mini ones. Yeah, they do. Those I don't the get those. So. I do. Unless it's a dollop of whipped cream. <laughs> and a dollop of whipped cream. And cheesecake pieces. <laughs> All right. Um, so is that enough about Menchie's? I think it probably yeah. is. And so Menchie's is actually an awesome place because it, it's not your normal small, medium, large in terms of ice cream. Oh, it's, yeah. Well, it goes by the ounce. So I believe it's 59 cents per ounce. So, you know, if It's you, basically a, a, a contest to see who can get to $5 the quickest. Yeah. It, yeah. It's very, very simple, especially oh. whenever you get to the top end. It's very easy. And... It, it's actually kind of sad because you don't realize how much ice cream you can put in one of those cups until you go to Menchie's and it's like, how did I just spend fifteen dollars on one cup of frozen yogurt? And the cashier lady, she judges you <laughs> and you put it on there. It's they like do. eight ounces. However, you can also lower your price using uh, fun discounts. Well, let's talk about discounts because those are fun. Yeah, uh, they have an AP discount, uh huh, and then they have a team member discount if you are a Universal team member. Yeah, so but that's good. I, I feel like most people would be using an annual pass discount. Sure, but I wanted to mention it because I'm yeah. sure there's like one person. Okay, and right? so yeah, absolutely. So this kind of took over Katie's Candy <laughs> Store in the TCBY area. Exactly, it used to be in City Walk. It's on that like San Francisco Street mm-hmm. uh, staircase, directly across from Hart and Huntington Tattoo Shop. So, so you can get a tattoo, then go to Menchie's, mm-hmm. yeah. and it'll be eventually right next to the Bread Box, <clears throat> which will be their artisanal sandwich place. Artisanal. Artisanal. Yes. Yeah. So that that's where it is. Uh, I wish I had a, a giant map to hold up in front of me. And I'm kind of glad that you out. don't. I don't. Um, uh, that's just not being but it's, prepared. It's a nice addition. So we just it we is. talked about uh, earlier that the Cold Stone opened. Exactly. So that's kind of like heavier ice cream. I mean, they're doing the whole mixing or whatever on the frozen slab. Yeah. Um, but this is a nice kind of healthier alternative. It, absolutely. I, I think I've said it once to you before. Cold Stone's where I want to go if I really, really want ice cream. But if I... If I still want that like sweet tooth craving type snack, I'll go to Menchie's because I can still get, I can still get that from it. But I can also feel better about myself because okay. I'm adding cheesecake pieces. I, I fully and believe that, but I don't remember you telling me that before. Well, but you I, know, can, I can support it. Let's just say that. Yeah. All right, fine. Let's move on. Let's move on. So Universal Studio Store okay. now open. Now open, and I had the realization today that I can't picture the old one. I can only picture that weird white tent. Not a lot of people can picture it. I don't even know if I ever went in the old one. Okay. Does, I mean, was it in the same exact location? I, I doubt, since I've been with you every time yeah. you've gone in there. You've never been in. Okay. So, All right. Um, I mean, it, it's just now a massive expanded ex- expanded <laughs> expansion of a store. It is. Uh, and really, the, the new details come at come from the outside of the actual store. So they they turned the entire exterior facade into a universal blue. Yes. And it just looks absolutely beautiful. And it's really nice in person. Unfortunately, on the inside, you still just get the same universal stuff that you get at all the universal studio stores everywhere else. I mean, I think we can, can kind of compare it to a World of Disney type store in the fact that it's in City Walk. Um, so you don't need to go into the parks, but they have a lot of that style merchandise. They have the yep. Harry Potter merchandise, a lot of it. They have like T-shirts and stuff. They have some minions. If you've left the parks and you didn't get a minion, or if you didn't, you know, if you didn't get something Simpsons related, right? If you didn't get your Transformers related thing. All it's, that stuff. It's kind of that. It's it's the mix of anything you could want Universal. Exactly. And it's right in City Walk, especially for people who don't want to spend money to go into the theme parks, but mm-hmm. they want to spend the money to park. dollars to park. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I'm sure there's those people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm sure they're out there. What if someone just wants to go to Emeralds to eat? Yeah, I fully support that. And you know what? They can stop at the studio store because it's it's pretty close to Emeralds. Or Antihitos. Yeah. For a margarita. And then soon enough, Vivo and the mm-hmm. and, uh, Hot Dog Cal- Fish. Okay, Hot Cal- Dog Fish. Hall of Fame. Well, let's talk about Hot Dog Hall of Fame and, yep. and Vivo because they're actually opening this month. They they will be. Yeah, they're, they're opening soon. So yeah. we'll be able to go to those. Still no exact dates, no. but they flat out said that they're going to be open by the end of this month. So Exactly. That's that's nice to know. Uh, Viva, Vivo, excuse me, is going to be the Italian food place that took over Pasta More. Yes. Uh, so they're saying it's going to be all handcrafted pasta and yeah. uh, 
Uh, so they roll it themselves. I think there's like an old Italian woman in the window yeah. making the pasta when you walk by. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Strigonona, you might call her. They don't pay her. She just does it for free because she wants people. <laughs> to want that. Does everybody remember that book? <laughs> um, yeah, it, yeah, it should be good. I think it's going to be nice. It looks nice. I like the design uh, details. The concept art looks really nice. Yeah. So I think it'll be good. Yeah, and yeah. then above that, cowfish. We've... That's what I'm most excited for, but I don't yeah. think we have an estimate on that yet. They, we don't. they all said summer for the whole city walk thing. Yeah, but we don't know when in summer. It could I, be August. I or... mean, that's they're running out of time and running out of. Uh, uh, technically, uh, summer's not even here yet. So. Well, yeah, but the stuff that they're actually going to put in <clears throat> yeah. is basically coming down to cowfish and then bread box. Exactly. The artisanal sandwich place. Artisanal. So those are really the last two things to come in. But I'm happy about Vivo. Uh, <laughs> I've been waiting quite a bit. Every for time it. you say that, I just repeat it and not correct you. But I, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I am. I'm. I'm happy about Hot Dog Hall of Fame. Especially. I am too. I mean, I, I love we, hot dogs. We kind of talked about it last episode, real briefly. I yeah. believe, maybe. <clears throat> Who remembers? No one watched, so we're fine. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's gonna be good. Sausages, hot dogs, ballparks around the world, from around the seating, world, seating, sports. Yeah. Let's move on to Mardi okay. Gras because it's still happening. It's still kicking, is what I put in the yeah. script. Yeah. I know. And it's, there's still one more weekend. One more weekend. Because Robin, Robin Thicke. Thicke is making his big appearance after the whole Not divorce. sickness. Oh, okay, sure. I mean the sickness. Yeah. He, he was scheduled, uh, uh, let's say, a couple months ago. I think it was something like that. It February, was maybe. Even. Like February 7th. Okay. He was, he was either like the first or the second act for Mardi Gras. Yeah, and we made jokes about it. You know, he said he was sick. And then mm-hmm. the next day he was in Disneyland in California with yep. his kids. And then they announced that huge breaking story that everyone was devastated because he was getting a divorce. Mostly Alan Thicke was devastated. But he's had his fair share. I mean, he, it's, it passes from father to son, I think, right? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Alan Thicke. Yeah. He's still rolling that growing pains yeah. money. <laughs> but, uh, no, Mardi Gras, this, we actually went to Huey Lewis just to see Huey Lewis. We, we did. I, I love Huey Lewis, actually. Yeah. You you are you know more about his catalog, yeah. sure. Um, but it was unbelievable. I will say so. I, I noticed when I first went into park that it was super crowded, mm-hmm. um, and this was a Saturday, so I wasn't sure if it was just because uh, it was the weekend and people were coming to visit you know the parks, or if it had something to do with Huey Lewis. And I've since realized that it had absolutely everything to do with Huey Lewis. Of course, there were so many people in that park. Yeah, I, I mean I've talked about uh, the first Mardi Gras I've experienced. Once again, only to you, but uh, it was Leonard Skinner. Yeah, yeah. It was literally the most insane thing I've ever seen. Just bikers everywhere. And the, the crowd is just out of this world because you'll see the normal foreign family and then the normal American family. And then all of a sudden you'll see these. A perfect use of the word normal. Normal. Okay. <laughs> the new normal. That show that got canceled. Yes. All right. But uh, no, you just see you see a really diverse crowd at these Mardi Gras concerts, depending on who's playing. And uh, Huey Lewis was not as dangerous as Leonard Skinner. Thank goodness. Dangerous. Because okay. Well, I mean, they had to call in OPD sure, to sure. do crowd control. So that's whenever you're. I will say for this one, it was pretty varied, but there was a definite type yeah. of demographic that was here for this show. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say my parents' demographic. I would absolutely say my parents. Okay. I think that's so a fair I statement. I feel like my parents would have been there had they been down in Orlando at this point in time. Absolutely. So. Yeah. But uh, great show. It was fantastic. Yeah. It was an hour and a half long. Yeah. I think traditionally they're, what, 45 minutes to an hour? Uh, Maybe you know, less, right? 30 minutes? Anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and 15. Oh, okay. So it, it varies. Yeah. But, but he's 63 years old and was fantastic. Yeah. He was so energetic. He absolutely loved what he was doing. But the weird part about it is <clears throat> watching Mardi Gras happen at the end of May, literally the last yeah. weekend of May, it, something just felt absolutely bizarre about it because <clears throat> everyone, I mean, the parade still goes on and, and such and everyone gets excited for beads. I took my sister for the yeah. first time and she's having a ball <laughs> with it, but like, uh, this is just kind of weird. This feels tainted almost at this point, <laughs> tainted by time. Okay. I mean, that's a strong feeling. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far, but it does seem a little weird that it's still going on because yeah. this is what it's third, fourth, it started in February. So yeah, we're approaching Third, its fourth, yeah. fifth month. It's they should just make it year round at this point. Oh sure. So, and I, I feel like we also have to mention briefly we have a lot to talk about. But the yeah. only reason it's going this long is because they wanted to keep 
the buzz and the excitement going yeah. before Diagon Alley actually opens up. Because, you know, they've been saying summer. So, you know, normally Mardi Gras would end in April. But what? how do you get people to come between April and May sure. if everyone wants to wait until summer with Diagon Alley? You throw in <coughs> huge artists like well, Kelly Rowland. She was, uh, or no, it wasn't. Was it Kelly Rowland? Kelly Rowland was yeah, here, she yeah. Was. So at, at this point, I think all uh, two of the three members of Destiny's Child were here, which means a lot more to you than me. <laughs> yeah, well, Beyonce wasn't here. Who's that? Yeah. Okay. The Bayency. But since I brought up Diagon Alley, let's, let's talk about Diagon Alley. Actually, talk about it. <clears throat> oh, you want me to start? Yeah. All right. So this past week, they've announced some of the food that's coming, yes, and they so did. it's pretty exciting news. Um, a lot of it, actually, all of it is themed kind of at. A, a British style of food because this is where well that would make sense <laughs> this is where Diagon Alley is it's in London did you know that okay well I, some of them I don't know how to pronounce so obviously we have bangers and mash mm-hmm. toad in the hole which is sausage baked into Yorkshire pudding and served with onion gravy there's cottage pie mm-hmm. fisherman's pie mm-hmm. beef lamb and Guinness stew which is going to be fantastic delicious. Yep. this is the one I'm going to have trouble with uh, plowman's feast <laughs> would you pronounce it that way um What's the reason you're having problems for it? The way you pronounce it or the feast of English cheeses, the crusty bread, the pickles? That's not my problem. That sounds amazing. Okay. The word is P-L-O-U-G-H-M-A-N. I'm not an English major. Well, neither am I. That's why I said I was having trouble with it. So there's also split pea soup. Yes. Banger pub style Uh sandwich. Fish and chips. And And more. more. (laughs) And more. (laughs) We're reading the same thing. We didn't coordinate the end more. We did not, but it still worked, I think. We'll do it next. (laughs) Okay. 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 Are you going to talk? I will continue okay. to talk about the beverages that will be in Diagon Alley. Sounds amazing. Right? Yeah. I'm, I'm excited about two. of Actually, probably more than two, but there's two that are on the top of my list. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a fishy green ale. These yeah. are not the two, by the way. I'm starting with the others. Fishy green ale, which, I don't know, it tells us to use our imagination. So that's not a good sign mm-hmm. to me. Um, Otter's fizzy orange juice. Yeah. Tongue tying lemon squash. Mm. Peach tree fizzing tea, yeah. gilly water. Yeah. Whenever I hear that, I think of the uh, Kristen Wiig gilly. gilly. Yeah. <laughs> Pumpkin <laughs> juice, and butter beer, yeah. and then the two that I'm really excited for are two um, special draft beers. Yes. These are two. Uh, so one of them is going to be called the Wizard's Brew, and mm-hmm. one of them is called the Dragon's Scale. And they're both made by the Florida Brewing Company. Yes. Which so, I actually don't know too much about. I don't know much about <laughs> them either, except that they also make the Hog's Head Brew. Yes, and which is also, fantastic. And then they make Duff, they Duff, Duff Light and Duff Dry. Okay. So, I mean, they've already done a great job with those three. Four beers, sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, these ones are going to be amazing. I hope that there's a nice little twist and it's just not that takeoff of like Yingling. Or, well, that's what they, they model after common beers, which I understand. I would love to see a more hoppy beer. Yeah. Maybe even not a, an IPA, but a pale ale would be nice to see. One day, maybe. Oh, One yeah. Day. One day. Okay. Oh, well. So, uh, yeah. let's talk about the ice cream. Okay, this is actually... Do you actually, want me to talk about it? Why don't you take this? Okay, yeah. so Florian Fortis Cruz Ice Cream <clears throat> Parlor uh, in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade right now. Sometimes they pull out the uh, the cart that has the ice cream on it, and of course they have the... Uh, the strawberry peanut butter ice cream that is kind of hugely popular in Harry Potter. Realm. They mention it, yep. But now they're going to have the the ice cream parlor in Diagon Alley <laughs> that actually has a lot more, including a Granny Smith flavor, chocolate chili, yum, yes. clotted cream. Sounds like it's going to really hurt your heart. <laughs> Apple crumble, amazing. Sticky toffee pudding, yes. yum. Salted caramel blondie. Okay. I'm glad you're having a reaction to every Why one of these. Why not? Chocolate yeah. and raspberry. Mmm. Yeah. Already, uh, orange <laughs> okay. marmalade. Mmm. Marmalade? Then, oh, you're so fancy today. Sweet lady yeah. marmalade. Okay, there you go. Uh, the, Patty LaBelle ice cream. Here are the two that I am most pumped about. Okay, I'm glad you, the, okay, I'm glad the, you said that because I was worried about the one you skipped. I but, mean, the first the first one, yeah. Earl Grey and uh, Lavender. I'm really excited about this one. I feel yeah. like it's going to be light, pleasant. And extremely British. Yes. But that's great. No, that's how it needs to it's be. It's almost like a Downton Abbey ice cream, I think. If you say so. I do. Okay. A Dowager Count ice, uh, Countess ice cream. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the one that's going to be insanely popular, butterbeer ice cream. Because people can't live without their butterbeer. No, they can't. I hope that... I, 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 the butterbeer for me is way too sweet. Yeah. Because it's like this really sweet soda, and it's, I'm not a huge fan. I would prefer to just drink the... Uh, or to get a whole cup of that yeah, topping. Well. But I hope that this is a balance of the 
of the flavor. So I'm excited about this. Well, <laughs> agree to disagree. I love better beer oh, I know you in do. every yeah. way. Uh, <clears throat> it's amazing. It's delicious. So okay. it might not be nutritious, but it's not terrible for you. What did you, you, you have a calorie count, don't you? I don't have an exact oh, one. I, thought I think you it's only it. like 190 calories oh, okay. though in a serving. It's it really seems not small. that bad yeah. for you. No, they tried to make it somewhat healthy. Sure. But um, yeah, that's that's the food I'm really excited about. It. And I, uh, another reason why we brought it up, of course, is uh, the next show we're actually going to be doing is going to be our Diagon Alley show. Exactly. Uh, because it's finally going to be open. We're going to be going to our media event. It uh-huh. might not. It's not going to be open for everyone, technically. Um, right now, we're looking at the opening date on the uh, on June 29th because that's whenever Universal is going to start selling their special vacation exactly, packages yeah. with it. But, you know, there's always a chance for soft openings before then in between the media event and actual opening and date. the actual opening date. So if anything happens, we'll let them know, I we, think. We will, I guess. I mean, metaphorically speaking, we kind of have to. <laughs> I don't understand that. That but made zero sense. No, it didn't make any sense. Okay. But I will say that the next week, like you mentioned, next week is the yeah. media event from like the 17th through the 20th. So we'll be very active on Twitter. Yes. And Facebook. We'll have lots of photos of everything. Sean will be very active. Yeah. You'll just be sitting there. All right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so we'll have lots of coverage for that. And then we'll be doing that show. Yes. And we won't have a live one. Are we talking about this well, now? Or? I okay, mean, we'll, we'll leave that for later. We'll, we'll give you details whenever we know them. But exactly. But we have something special hopefully planned for it. And then also we have to mention that on the 16th is the complete opening of Cabana Bay. We've talked about that mm-hmm. before as well, too. Uh, we're going to be doing our full coverage. And as I mentioned at one point in time, we're going to have a special guest come on the show and help us review that whenever we do it. So yeah. hopefully that's still the case. And uh, It's not Andy Davis. <laughs> it's... <sighs> Wait. I had to keep. I, I'm sorry, I did it for Mickey Rooney and had to do it for this too. I love Alice. I really do. So that'll be coming on probably the next show after the next one. Alex will appreciate that. Um. So, with that being said, why, why don't we just take a break? Should before, we? Are you sure? I, I think before you bring us down All right. anymore, we should probably just take a break. All right, sounds good. So stick with us, guys, and we'll be right back. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect trip to Universal, whether you stay on-site at one of the world-class hotels or are in need of theme park tickets with round-trip transportation to and from Walt Disney World. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. So we're back, and uh, once again, now it's time to get back to basics. Wow, it just gets better and better. If you want to say it that way, I think this is probably the uh, the best part of the show. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. There might be more to come afterwards, but there's only one way to find out. It's kind of threatening. But it's not really a threat. Okay. You've just got to stick with us, and uh, eventually it's going to get better. <laughs> it will get better. Should we talk about what we're talking about? Back to basics? We're getting back to basics. Should I explain the idea? Yes, it was your idea. It I was think, my idea. Unless you want me to explain your idea. No, I'd prefer to explain my own idea. Let's go for it. So this is our 10th episode, and we've talked about lots of things. Everyone hates Harry Potter, and Tejitos, yeah. City Walk. What else have we talked about? Hey. Mardi Gras. We've, all that crap. But we've never really talked about things like the basic information that I think a lot of people don't understand about Universal. And I'm kind of in that group. So true, when I True and false. We, we did talk about ticket prices and sure, stuff. Okay, so that was back see, in episode Remember when six, I said, and what seven? else have we talked about? Sure, you're right. We've so, talked about tickets, important things like that. But we need to get even more basic because there are people out there like Sean who who just need that helping hand. He okay. needs a friend. Sure. Thank you for being a friend. I th- th- figured you were going to go with that. Well, um, we didn't sing it this break, unlike last, last time. There's still time. All right. So let's talk about basics. Mm-hmm. And this is anything from like where Universal is located. Because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people don't really understand that. I mean, maybe they do. Yeah. But it's also about kind of the layout of the whole property, including parking and, and yeah. where the parks are, uh, what City Walk is and where it's located. That, that's the kind of stuff that I want to cover because yeah. it's stuff that if, if no one has any kind of idea of what how, how Universal is laid out or how it works, yeah. this is the episode to watch to understand that. And, and I agree. Um, okay. I, I think we should start with where it's actually located sure, let's. because that's kind of the biggest biggest thing to get over uh the first time i ever went to universal was actually during my college program um you know 
whenever you come here as a tourist, a lot of people are so used to just getting on the magical That's express. That's what I would do. Or, yeah. Like my parents would rent a car. Sure. And then, you know, we're at Disney. But you go straight. I mean, like that. yeah. Yeah. But um, just in general, you know, it's it's Orlando is a really big place. It's not all right together. It and is. It's not just Disney World. Disney World's not even in Orlando. No. Universal Orlando isn't even in Orlando. It's all kind of outside area. So, just in general, you know, you have you know you have Orlando International Airport kind of on the east side of the city. Exactly. Orlando's north. Universal's to the west, and then Walt Disney World's way far out on I four west. Sure. So, and and thank God we have this this wonderful map yeah. that someone's made. Um, but I think a good way to think about it is Universal is basically halfway between Walt Disney World and downtown Orlando. That is right? probably the best way to describe it. So if you it. had to tell someone how do you get to uh-huh. Universal, just head up I-4 north. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, I-4 I east. It does not go north to south. Okay. But I-4 east, and it's halfway between downtown and Disney World. Agree. So that's the easy way to think about it. So uh, You want to talk about some uh, actual statistics? Yeah, let's talk about statistics. Okay. So let's imagine that you're going from Disney World to Universal Orlando. Which I think is a pretty common trip. People I think do that a lot. That would be one of the most common sure. trips. Um, so you're obviously, as we already said, you're going to go up I-4 East, mm-hmm. and it's just straight up. It's about anywhere from 9 to 15 miles, depending on where you're actually at yeah. in uh, Disney World. Because let's say you're all the way in the back by Magic Kingdom. That is so high up yeah. that you have to drive all the way down to I-4 before exactly. you can start going up. And I mean, Sure. I mean, you can drive sure, back there's, roads. There's ways around that if you are back in Magic Kingdom. I would say Animal Kingdom would probably be one of the furthest if you're back there. Exactly. That's um, a good point, too. But, yeah, and so it's it's also important to say that depending on the time of day, yeah. there can be pretty big traffic issues. Yeah. But I would estimate that trip to be anywhere between 15 to 30, 45 on a, on a bad yeah. rush hour time. Oh, absolutely. 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be your absolute worst. Um, but it, it's simple. It's literally you get on I-4. You go east towards Orlando direction, mm-hmm. and you just follow it, and eventually you're going to get there. I think there's two exits that you could get off that you can comfortably get to Universal. Exactly, uh-huh. um, and they're they're marked really well. There there's might big be signs. three. There's um, there are probably three. Yeah, yeah, and it's you can get off either on Sand Lake to go to Turkey Lake. Exactly, you can get off on International Drive. I drive or to Kirkman get there or Kirkman. Yeah, exactly. So the next probably most common way you're going to be coming to Universal is from. MCO, or as most of the the commoners call it, Orlando International Airport. The commoners, yeah. The commoners. Mm -hmm. So, can we talk um, about why it's MCO? Because I know. Do you know? I do. Okay. It used to be McCoy Airfield. Yes. So it's named after the Air Force Base. That Mm -hmm. was. It's no longer operating, but it's McCoy MCO. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's talk. Okay, Okay, so let's continue the conversation. Talk about how to get to Universal (laughs) from there. All right. That's that's interesting. I will. I will announce this. Okay. We we calculated it, and it's about 17 miles. Right? Yes. Um, and I would recommend the route of 528. Mm-hmm. There are other ways, of course, but you could take 528, which we need to point out that it is a toll road. Yes. So if you have a rental car that has that included, that works. Mm-hmm. If not, I'm, I didn't look up the exact amount, but I would, I would estimate around $1.50. I believe it's $1.25 at both of the toll. Uh, so it could toll, be up to $2.50 or call, something. Toll booth. Toll booth. That you Phantom have to go toll booth. Yeah. yeah I, I, it's going to be around $2.50 each way. Okay. So... All right, yeah. So I would estimate that at probably around a 25-minute drive. It could be shorter depending on how traffic is. So, and of course, you take 528 to 4. To I-4, and it's only one or two exits. Yep, and there is other ways around it, but we're coming up with, obviously, the most simple way of going. And, of course, that's that's toll roads. uh, The same way if you'd be going to Disney from the airport. Exactly. They're toll roads. Yeah. So, and then on the off chance that you're coming from Orlando or you want to go to Orlando, we decided to... uh, talk about that too did so, we i think this was a decision we, on your own it, okay then we don't have to talk about it. you just drive down i4 it's simple enough so it, it's really easy to I get four. around yes i4 yeah yeah i4 is kind of the heart of orlando it is unfortunately if you want to say that i mean it's fine i just i think it needs some help and oh. it's going to get it so. oh okay okay let's not get political but Let, let's not so <laughs> about roads <laughs> what whatever so well, can we talk about what's around universal Please. Okay. So there are lots of things around the Universal area. Absolutely. Um, I think one big section is you could you say that is I drive mm-hmm. section. So if you've heard of International Drive, there's a lot of attractions there yeah. that I think would interest a lot of people. There's restaurants. Absolutely. There's a place called Point Orlando. 
which is kind of a grouping of restaurants, small attractions. I think that you know there are kind of like I don't know museum kind of things there. Yeah. Um, there's a big movie theater. Yeah. Now, you're you're gonna see stuff like yeah. uh, the Ripley, believe it or not. Yeah, museum, sure. Yeah, that's what it is. The yeah. Titanic experience, which I know is near and dear to your heart. Oh no, I've done it twice. I love it. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, basically every chain restaurant you want, Bahama Mama, Olive Garden, but also Dave a Buster's, step above. There's there. like Capital Grill. There's some nicer. True. There's an ice bar. So yeah. there's some nicer places to go to there. Exactly, mm-hmm. and I mean International Drive is also a very long distance. Yes. Uh, so it even stretches all the way down to Sea World, and then even can make its way to Disney property too. So if you yeah. go, if you go to start driving down I Drive, you're gonna see. It actually a spits lot. out over on the other end near uh, Nick Hotel. Yeah. And yeah. you're also going to find out that iDrive is just full of traffic. But yeah. there's there's a lot of great things there to hit up, um, especially once the Orlando Eye gets built. Well, in. that's what I wanted to mention, too. We, there's, a, mm-hmm. a, a, I think, an aquarium opening up there. There's the Orlando Eye, mm-hmm. which you can see from I-4. It looks huge. Yeah. I mean, I can only imagine what it's oh, going it to be like massive. when it's built. Yeah. yeah. And that's, um, that's not even the actual wheel part. That's just the, the parts that's holding the wheel. Exactly. It's yeah. just like the, the support system or whatever. And then we actually talked about on the Disney World show today, they're building a the, the Amy polar, polar coaster. coaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that'll be great. <laughs> yeah, I drive. That's, that's the biggest place. That's the place that most people go to. Yeah. However, our kind of our insider look at it, <laughs> if, okay. if you want to call it that. Dr. Phillips area. There's a nice area called Dr. Phillips and that um, I would say, so we talked about the exits you can take to get to Universal. One of those is Sand Lake. Uh-huh. And if you take the Sand Lake exit, there are, uh, are a lot of restaurants in that area. Yeah. Um, that's the kind of the beginning of Dr. Phillips, I would say. Yeah. Um, so you start with kind of Whole Foods. That's kind of the, the main area. There's a yeah. sa- the Sato Sushi is there. There's a Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> There's a Dunkin' Donuts. Um, you know, that, that wonderful restaurant. Yes. Um, but then as you go further north, you can take some side streets like Turkey Lake and then get into, or, or actually if you go down on Sand Lake and then turn right onto Dr. Phillips Road, yeah, Boulevard, Street, I don't know what it well, is. Well, just if you go on Sand but, Lake, that's where Restaurant Row is. Yes. That's where you're going to have There's a Roy's. Uh, Seasons 52, yeah. Roy's, uh, Rocco's Tacos. Oh, yeah, there, um, yeah. Just a lot of the more unique restaurants. They're, exactly. They're, they're not necessarily only in Orlando. They could be chains. Uh but, like like our favorite world of beer, yeah. but it's actual unique it is places unique. too. Like Roy's isn't everywhere. Roy's is in very select cities. Yeah. Um, most notably, it's right across from Alani mm-hmm. in Hawaii. That's at the Marriott. Uh, at the Marriott. Yeah. Or no, it's on the golf course. That's right across the street. Okay. The Marriott's right beside Alani. But it, as I digress, there we go. Um, but I will say this though. So even though it's it is closer to Universal, I think it's a nice drive, even if you're staying at Disney. Absolutely. Um, it's if you especially if you're a rental car. There's no reason if you're getting tired of kind of the restaurants down, at either on property or even kind of the surrounding crossroads, whatever area. Yeah. It's really easy to get up there, and, and there's some nice selections. You'll most likely find me if you actually look around. Okay. Because I'm usually over in that area getting food. I feel like you almost went into like a Willy Wonka song, if you look around. Pure You'll imagination. Pure imagination. <laughs> I don't think they own that yet. Uh, okay. That's the new expansion. That's we won't talk about that yet. Okay. Um, and then, briefly too, I want to mention one of uh, my favorite restaurants that's actually in the uh, in the Metro West area, which is north of uh, Universal, and that's Teak. Okay. It's a bar and grill. It's absolutely delicious. Great, great burgers. You'll never find me there, so don't look for it's me. It's a really sketchy neighborhood, too. If you see me, don't don't talk to me. Yeah. I'm kind of one of those people that just doesn't like contact. All right. Okay. So that kind of covers the, the general surrounding area, yes, I think, it does. for the most part. Uh, there's more, obviously. It's a big city. But it that's is. The it's the city part. beautiful. It, it, you could say. <laughs> All right, let's move on to actually back to Universal, because that's what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, so one thing I think uh, you really need to clarify, because you've had to say this to me a thousand times, Yeah. but the naming conventions. Okay. What is the difference? Because we see Universal Orlando, we see Universal Studios, we uh-huh. see... On the, what, how does that all work? Okay. I know the answer, but I'm asking you. So to... let, me, let me weave my tail here, <laughs> Oh, please. God. Sit so down and I'll tell you what. We have Universal Orlando Resort. That is the official title of it. Okay. You will sometimes see it as UO or UOR, but that's how you're going to see it. Yes. So then within UOR, you're also going to have USF, and then you're also going to have IOA. Okay. USF being Universal Studios Florida, and then IOA as Islands of Adventure. So it's it's actually pretty easy, if you remember it, kind of like Disney World. Some people call Magic Kingdom Disney World, Mm -hmm. and it drives everyone nuts. I mean... 
It drives us it drives nuts. me nuts. So if you think about it as Walt Disney World is the overarching name of the property. WDW. That's, that's the resort you're going yeah. to. Then within it, you have multiple parks. In exactly. Disney's case, you have four. In Universal's, you have two. You have Universal two. Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then we also have City Walk City there. Walk. Kind of like downtown Disney. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, the first thing I want to actually cover there is, you know... Like like we talked about whenever we did the ticket episode, you okay. start with the parking. Yes. Um, there are no outside lots to park mm-hmm. at Universal. It's only two parking garages. Um, and then there's tiers of parking. It's base Huge is at parking seven, garages. Yeah. The base is at $17, okay. and that's for normal cars. And then it goes up, and it fluctuates if you want premier parking, or which is the preferred parking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yada, yada, yada. Watch the ticket information episode on that. But one thing that we have to say is it doesn't matter what you're doing at Universal. Yes. You have to pay to park depending on what hours you're there. After 10 o'clock mm-hmm. p.m., it's free to park. But And then even rates go down to like $5 from like 6 and on. But if you're going any time during the day, you're paying to park. Exactly. Uh, even if you're just going to City Walk, just grabbing a bike. Even if you're just going to Menchie's, However, which is a totally valid reason to go However, pay. I'm going to throw this out there, too. Okay, I'm excited. At Emeralds, they offer a lunch special that if you go there for lunch and you get the pre uh, the prefix meal, and the pre fee, you may say you'll is that what I don't you know. Say I just it? made that up. Okay, let's go. Uh, if you get that, you actually get your parking uh, paid for because of it. So, okay, and nice. that can go with the uh, valet. Yeah, because if you're eating at Emeralds, then you're probably going to be paying valet. It's an expensive place. It is expensive, but it's nice. Too expensive for my blood. Okay. So you get out of the parking garages. That dumps you in to City Walk. Uh, yes, it does. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about the parking garages specifically, though? Because there's something I want to say. Go for it. They're so confusing. Apparently, I don't get, know. They're so confusing to get out of. Every single time that I've left the Universal parking garages, it spits me out somewhere else, and I get lost. <laughs> Good Do you find that? I no. mean, are we not talking about this? Okay, sorry. This well, isn't a secret. We'll, we'll We've talked about this before. We'll cover this then. Okay, so Universal is basically a giant X. Yes. In the terms of how you get around it. So there is a loop that will go all the way around which Universal, is ho- which is um, it's going to be Kirkman Road, okay, as well as Vineland Road. Yes. And Turkey okay, Lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of forms it makes a circle. the box around it. And then you're going to have Universal Boulevard going up and down. And then, and then left Hollywood. and right is Hollywood. Hollywood. Okay. So either, you know, it's it's not really that difficult because however you get spit out of, as long as you look for where City Walk is, you can find your way home. All right. But there was that one time I got lost at Lockheed Martin. You went out to International <laughs> Drive and drove around. I don't know how you it was, did it. You've done it before. You told me. <laughs> All right. So don't pretend like you've never done this. I, I got out of the parking garage, accidentally turned on, Univer- on uh, iDrive. Yeah. Then there's like this weird gated Lockheed Martin thing. Yeah. That there's like this special exit you have to go through and there's like an armed guard and he was angry and I had to say, listen, I got turned around. You're talking very far off though at the point that it doesn't even matter. <laughs> okay. So we will... Uh, well, let's move on to... Yeah. City Walk. Yeah, so City okay. Walk is the major hub. Let's think of it as a downtown Disney type place. Yes. Um, the only way you can get to the parks actually is through City Walk. Okay. Unless you're staying at a hotel, but that's just a different case. We're yeah. going to get there too. But, but the parks are, are off of City Walk. So City yeah. Walk is um, is like downtown Disney, but there's yeah. a huge body of uh, a body of water in the center of it. Exactly. And then there's a pathway around it, almost yeah. kind of similar to World Showcase in the mm-hmm. fact that you can walk around the entire lake. Exactly. Um, then the two parks are situated on the left and the right sides. Mm-hmm. So on the right, you have Universal Studios Florida. Yeah. And on the left, you have I- Islands of Adventure. And then exactly. in, in between those walkways, there's all kinds of shops. We've talked about a lot of them. That's where you'll find Anahitos. You'll find uh, the new Menchies. Yeah. That's where NASCAR Grill uh, is. Yeah, it's literally like a, a haven for shopping and, and eating. fast food more, and Starbucks. More eating than the shopping yeah. aspect of it. But then that's also where the AMC Theater is. Uh and that's also where you have um, the Hollywood drive-in miniature golf, mm-hmm. which is, it's fun. It's not very challenging. But then again, I'm also a golf expert. So let's uh, let's not even talk golf. Um, I don't think we are. I think oh, you are. Fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, City Walk, 
it's it can be confusing at first. It's literally just a stretch, and then it V's yeah. out, and there's mm-hmm. some back alleys where you'll get mugged if you don't watch out where you're I going. I don't think that's true. Okay. okay, just keep shooting down everything I'm saying. Um, <laughs> I don't think we should tell people that they're going to get mugged at City Walk. I think that's a bad idea. But the nice part about City Walk is that's where you can also see the, the weenies that are going to draw you to the parks. Yes. As you've already mentioned, IOA on the left, is the Universal lighthouse. Studios yep. on the right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Islands of Adventure has... I would argue that... Okay, sorry, go ahead. It, it has the lighthouse, yeah. which is based on one of the the nine wonders of the world. It is the lighthouse at Alexandria. Yeah, exactly. Which I don't know how they they based it on that, but that's that's neither here nor there. And then... Seven. What seven. was the number you I said? I said nine, didn't I? Yeah. Well, those other two. Yeah. You're scaring me. <laughs> I'm not quick enough to think of funny two words, but let's just move on. <laughs> Okay, and then there's a globe. That's another one. Well, for the, the yeah, world. I would say that the other weenie for Universal Studios Florida um, is is the big globe that everyone knows. It's I, um, it's a spinning globe that says Universal. It's very reminiscent of the titles for for their movies. It's like what everyone would see whenever they turn on Nickelodeon. Exactly, and yeah. you know that's what they should see. And it spins around, and everyone wants their photo in front of it. Every it single congested. person. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's exciting to see. I'll, I'll be honest. The first time I went to City Walk was actually back in 2005. And that's basically all I wanted to yeah. see with the globe. I, I think it's also good to note that you can take your picture with the globe without even having to uh, go into the park. It is on the outside. Yes, I think that's important to so say. So if someone says, hey, I'm, I'm going to Universal, I really want to have this iconic picture, then you're, you're able to do it without paying any extra money except the money that you already paid to park. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. So I also want to say that the okay. Hard Rock... Um, Restaurant mm-hmm. and concert venue is in City Walk. Yeah. Because I know for me, I was kind of confused in the fact that there is a Hard Rock Hotel. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It, I know. They're both Hard Rock. I, I so, know. But then there's a Hard Rock restaurant and concert venue in City Walk. And yeah. they're two very separate things. Obviously, they share the name and they're the same company, whatever. But don't get them confused. Yeah. If you're right. seeing a concert, it's unless it's Velvet Sessions, that is in the hotel, not in the concert venue. So just do your research. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. Quick backstory. It's only going to take 10 seconds. Oh, good. Sean used to make slides Ugh. that had pictures in it. Every time they talked about Velvet Sessions, he would put the Hard Rock restaurant with the concert I venue instead I... of the hotel. And that's yeah. where this all comes from. So don't get confused. That's why we're clarifying it for no. everybody listening. Yeah, people watching. just pay attention to the words. They're there for your help and benefit. All right. You're being so, a jerk. But, no, it's a giant coliseum. Yeah. You can't miss it. Hard Rock food. We won't talk about that. Great concert venue. All the big concerts are going to happen there. Chicago. Chicago. Alan Jackson. Those are the two. And if you don't want to see a concert, Blue Man Group is yeah. also right so next door. This actually confuses me. You'll have to clarify. But mm-hmm. I know that the, the venue itself is technically in Universal Studios Florida. Mm-hmm. But the entrance to go in, you don't need to be in the park. You yeah. you enter through City Walk. Yeah, exactly. Okay. The the stage building where they shoot Blue Man... Well, they don't shoot Blue Man Group. They might shoot the people sometimes okay. in there, but... <laughs> this is a very <laughs> violent place. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Blue Man Group, it takes place in a sound stage, And okay. all the sound stages are in the studios. However, the entrance is on City Walk, and a lot of people will recognize the entrance because it's the iconic entrance or the iconic scene that it's we would facade. all see at the okay. end of of our favorite Nickelodeon exactly shows. And I would say Nickelodeon Studios and it has the staircase and they're all painted different colors and, and it had the right. big green fountain in the front with the um, what was the what was it called GAC 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 yeah yeah yeah. I just saw this the first night the other night for Huey Lewis we passed it and I was freaking out that I saw the facade of this building yeah it's boring and white now but you get to see it and that's there's what there's a little blue too there is the steps there's itself a little are blue. blue. Yeah. But, it's but not, it doesn't look like what it did in the shows. Yeah, so but. it's directly to the right of the Hard Rock Orlando. Yes. So if you want to get to Blue Man Group because you have tickets or you want to buy some right off the street, mm-hmm. that's how you're going to get there. Um, it, it's it's not difficult. Okay. Unless it is. I don't think it's difficult. I think it's easy. It's not. It's, yeah. it's very easy. So um, let's talk about the resorts too, because there are resorts. There are property. resorts, and I think uh, at least I don't. I didn't know at first where they were located, mm-hmm. but there are four on property. Yes. There's the Royal Pacific, the Hard Rock Hotel. Mm-hmm. There is uh, Portofino Bay, yep. and then Cabana Bay, which we've talked about a lot. We yes. have a whole uh, episode about it. We do. Um, but that's the most recent one. Yeah. The other three, I would compare them to deluxe resorts at Disney. Absolutely. Um, and we're not, obviously not going to do a review of them right now for, for this show. We will eventually. Mm-hmm. But just to, to talk about their placement, I know Royal Pacific is kind of behind Margaritaville. There's a path 
in from City Walk, right before you get to IOA, mm -hmm. there's a path that you can take to get to Royal Pacific. There is. Yes. Um, and it's also accessible by boat. By boat, sure. Yeah. yeah. All, all of them are accessible by a boat. They have it run. It comes on a pretty constant schedule about every 10 to 15 minutes. Exactly. It's a really nice, relaxing boat ride. Obviously, if you're going to Royal Pacific, you're kind of going out there by yourself. Sure. Um, the only reason I say that is because if you're going to... Uh, Portofino, which is the farthest off resort, mm -hmm. you pass Hard Rock along the way. However, yes. it does not stop there. There is a separate boat for Hard Rock, and then there's a separate boat for Portofino. Okay. So don't get on the boat going to Hard Rock, and then you be like, "Oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if they can just swing around Portofino okay. too." They won't do that. They're awesome. You would have to get out and then walk, which there is a walking. And path it's not too far, I have to say. No, it's yeah. about half a mile. Um, yeah. Because I walk it every now and then because I know how long it is. This so is where you do your jazz exercise. exercise. Mm -hmm. If you want to point it out and embarrass me. I will me, point it out and embarrass you. Um, but you're, no. you're actually, you're prancercising. I misspoke. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it, it's a really lovely path. Um, yeah. You know, I've only seen a couple rats here and there. All right. I'm kidding. You are really I've painting a horrible seen, picture. I've never seen any rats. Yeah. Um, um, I, can we talk about the rickshaws? <laughs> Yeah, we can. They're, now, <laughs> I, I have only known them to go between City Walk and uh, Royal Pacific because they're kind of themed. No, they also go to they Hard go Rock to and Portofino okay. as well. Now, here's well, how does the pricing structure work? It's free. Free, but, but tip. Yeah, you have to tip. And depending on, you know, your mm -hmm. your you know size, tip them well. Yeah, so if you have a girl who looks like she's 4 foot 11, maybe 100 pounds, and you expect... <laughs> Three adults <laughs> ranging anywhere from 200 pounds to, let's just say up. Yeah, let's just say up. You're going to have to tip this girl more money than you probably no, have No, because the one person time. is not going to get on the rickshaw. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but rickshaws are available. Rickshaws just are available. Just please tip your rickshaw drivers. Well. Drivers. Well. Because they're um, teeny girls and they, I don't know how they no, do there, it. No, there are gentlemen of the road. Oh, I'm, okay. Um, and they, they will also drive you around, but it's also available there for yeah. your, um, your, your pleasure. Uh, okay. Let's so move, yeah. Cabana Bay, though, you have to ride a bus. Cabana Bay is only a bus. Yeah. Um, eventually there will be a walkway. They're yeah. building the walking bridge. Yeah. Out right? of our tax money. Yeah. I know you're enraged, but I they're am. building it and it's going to be nice once it's there. It is. It's going to look, okay. it's going to look great. And we've talked about the buses and that, but it's, it's easy to get around. That's, that's kind of the point that. I, I think we're trying to make by it yeah. is that Universal is so similar to Disneyland in that once you get out of the parking and you get into the actual area, everything is it's a, right there. It's a self-contained resort, and that's exactly. what I really wanted to compare it to is Disneyland because I think a lot of people that come to Disney World have this conception that the Florida parks can be spread yeah. out. Um, like Disney World is. I mean, you wouldn't ever imagine walking to, from Epcot to Animal Kingdom. I mean, that's just absurd. Exactly. But the way Universal is laid out is there is this connection, and it is City Walk. Yeah. But you park, and you can walk wherever you need to go, even resorts. I, I agree. Yeah. And um, it, it is a big change for people who are used to Disney. They'll get there, and it's it's a lot of stuff happening right there, especially with City Walk. It can get really busy. At the end of the night, it can get ridiculous. I, I, um, I would say that a lot of it is geared, uh, aside from the restaurants and stuff, but there is a, a big nightlife Mm -hmm. Presence, yeah, uh, especially on the weeknights or weekends. Yeah, so yeah, on the weekends, not on the weekdays, yeah. not so I know, much. I mean, no. no, I mean, there's always that one random person who's dancing at the groove by themselves. By themselves, <laughs> but that's only been me like three times, so <laughs> yeah, I'm not one to judge. Don't talk to him if you if you see him there. Yeah, I'm I'm in my zone, so please don't bother me. <laughs> in my zone, I'm I'm in my zone. <laughs> All right, listening to my Huey Lewis. It's only Huey it's Lewis. The He's power like power of love. All right. <laughs> it's funny. Can you feel it? <laughs> okay. So, how do you feel about stopping this conversation? <laughs> let's do it. Okay. Let's just stop. <laughs> so, let's move on to the fun part. Okay. All right. Well, do we do we have anything else that we want to mention? Or did we cover the basics? I feel comfortable. Feel like... I feel like those okay. are nice basics. I mean, those are questions that I think a, a strict beginner would ask. Yeah. Where is it? How, where's how's it laid out? How can I get around? Yeah. Things like that. And it's very confusing. Um, if you've never done it before, the more it's you do it. It's confusing because it's unknown. Yeah. I wouldn't say that it's confusing once you get there and you've done it. And I, I won't lie. Sometimes I feel like there could be more signage there like there is at Disney World sure. where you can get lost 
so easily but also yeah. find your way because then all of a sudden there's a giant sign in front of you universal doesn't really have that as much but like i said but the benefit of universal i would say you're right it is laid out yeah. uh, in, a, in a nice conscious way but it's also smaller in the fact and, and that's good in the fact that if for some reason you go too far or you miss something yeah. it's not difficult to yeah. reroute yourself and get back to where you need to yeah go. yeah and it if anything bad would really happen you just have to phone home all right nice reference E.T. Be good. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't on camera for that. <laughs> All right, so should good. we, should we uh, do the do the game? So yeah, we're doing our uh, our tenth anniversary special. Okay. Our or tenth tenth. That's not how it works. Edition it did, yeah, special episode episode special game special. It just makes me think of like The Simpsons whenever they did like their seventy seventh episode celebration. Like just a random seventy seven. Well, ten is a nice round as number. much, but yeah. Uh, so. Should I set it up? So, yeah, set it up. Okay, Let's so go, Maestro. basically, I came up with this too. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. really carrying this whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> basically, on the Universal website, for the attraction pages, they have these small call-outs to testimonials that guests have given for the, this particular ride. So they kind of have a goofy photo of these people and then a snippet of the quote that they have given it for this particular ride. And this is in no way making fun of the people of the people or the quotes. This is just we're pointing it out. Okay, I uh, we're, we're just pointing it out, but they're they're funny to me. They seem a bit outdated. Um, so what we're going to play here is I've take I've gathered some of these quotes. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to have Craig guess what attraction they're they're raving about. Okay. Or, or they're they're giving a testimony. So to. let's do the, the sample one. The first, first one's an example because it's yeah. going to be insanely obvious to everyone. So it's going to come up, and I'm going to see. My grandson thought he really saved ET. Yes. And I see the grandson. It's blurry, but it looks like he has some type of little kid afro. And <laughs> wow! I didn't know you were going this far. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. So you know, if I'm if I'm trying to guess what attraction this came from, I would probably say it's from the the ET adventure. And you would guess correctly. It's pretty obvious. Yes. Hot dog. But they're not as. I'm, uh, I, I'm not. Yeah, don't I didn't look at my see. I didn't see. All right. I didn't see. So okay, let's go on. Should to we the move next. on to the second one? Let's move on. To the I second. will read this for you. Okay. Awesome brain twisting turns with cool music. And you have kind of like a bro with his like rock and roll hand signal. Yeah. With like, let's say a nephew, maybe cousin. I don't know. Do but you, their hats are askew and they're like. Do you think that this guy is the actual person who said the quote or that they just found someone that they could stereotype into saying I love the idea of them taking a picture of the of the guests as they get the quote but I don't I think these okay. are our stock images well I'm gonna have to say just based on that Hollywood rip ride rocket you got it yeah okay this is another kind of easy yeah. one yeah okay all right <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to uh, preface that we will have these images on uh, the show notes okay. so if you are listening audio uh, this isn't much fun i'm yeah. sure but you can go back and look or i would actually just encourage you to go watch watch the yeah. video portion of this part um so the next one is the quote is six out of five stars and you've got you, this guy he's probably a college student i'd say maybe a sophomore he's got kind of <laughs> He's got a lanyard of some kind. Yeah. Um, but anyway, this is his review of the attraction. Six out of five stars. I, I don't even know where to go with this one. I mean, it could it could literally be anything. Six out of five stars. But it's got to be something good. Um, I'm guessing it's not Lucy a tribute right off the bat. There were none for say, that. I'll just tell okay, you Okay, well, um, I'm going to go with the Hulk. All right. No, the answer is Men in Black. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which I've never done, but it's kind of like a gun shooter kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I would say it's more or less like a, a sky full of infinite stars. Maybe this a, would be your a, view. A galaxy out of five stars. Right, I'd that would be more that Men too. in Black oriented. Yeah. Let's move on. It sounds on. like ET. So, All right. Now, here we go. We have, I haven't been to USF in 10 years. This is my new favorite ride. And we just have a lady that's very happy. She's got kind of like a bun with like hair sticking out. Kind of 90s. Okay. Um... We're running out of good rides at USF. So you're right. So um, yeah, it's, it's a good clue. It's only in, it's this one's from Studios. Yeah. Uh, really, I'm thinking it's either Transformers or it's the Mummy. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with the Mummy. This is a trick one because it's Men in Black again. This Punch. page had two testimonials. <laughs> So, I mean, this woman loves Men in Black. I so does the guy. We are the only people getting any enjoyment from this, I think, right Honestly, now. I can tell you that that's fine with me because I'm having so much fun. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next. All right. Now you have a couple. A man that's balding, and I can't read his shirt, but 
they look like a very happy couple. Yeah, and their review for the attraction is Major Rush. I'm once again I'm gonna try with the Hulk. Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. No, it's Doctor Doom's Fear Fall. Well, a major rush. As a, it's no, in the same. As, as I've been on it before, I can guarantee you it is not a major rush. It's something. It's not a major rush. Okay. It's not even bad. It's just not a major rush. It's not a major rush. So you disagree with his testimony? I disagree. This so poor couple. I'm going to go offend him and right. his, his balding hair because that's I, cool. That wasn't a dig. I just, I mean, it's just a fact about him. <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> All right. Should we next. do the next one? Okay. So now... <laughs> <laughs> so now the quote is the kids get to run around dot 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 there's an ellipses in this one are we are we first off hoping that it's his kids running around I don't want he's happy about. I don't really want to assume whose kids they are I I wonder if maybe they don't have children they're just there to watch them run around um I'm gonna go with uh if I ran the zoo hopefully no it's no. Camp Jurassic Okay, that would have been my second guess. Okay. I wasn't going to say Fievel or Curious I, I hope it's not. Yeah. Okay. All right, so there's only two more, so hang in there. <sighs> okay. The, the, the review for this, uh, the testimonial, is just superb, period. It's very to the fact. Which, which uh, Who was the person who actually said the quote in this case? You know what? If that little kid uses the word superb, I, I give him a lot of credit. Okay. But I have a feeling it's probably the older gentleman. Okay. Um, let's go with... It, it's clearly a water ride as they're they're wet. Um, okay. So. I hope if this isn't a water ride, then I'm. Okay, uh, let's just. Get I, your I'm going with. Uh, I'm going with Popeyes. No, you were close. It's Ripsaw Falls. Okay. So no. I mean, it's only one to two, right? Yeah. No. Well, right. and then Jurassic Park. We'll we'll talk about. We'll okay. talk about we'll water save adventures. That. That's a really we'll exciting save it thing for coming. maybe yeah. a show in the future. All right. Okay. This is the last one, and uh. it's kind of my favorite. <laughs> this is the, the testimonial reads: uh, "Compared to Disney World, it's way cool." And you've got like two young girls that are just really yeah. happy, and so they're comparing everything to Disney, evidently. Um, the Cat in the Hat. No, but kind of close. Carousel. Yes. Hey. Carousel. <laughs> Carousel. Yeah. Still can't say it. No, I don't know how. One I, day. I just want to say Carousel. That's not how you say it, though. Well, you really want to give credit to Theodore. Carousel. Sousel. So you pronounce L. Sousel. Sousel. Carousel. Carousel. Yes. All right. There okay. you go. Well, this that, is. Yeah. This is not, and they were so happy about that ride. I mean, compared to Disney, it's way cool. It is. What way were they comparing cool. it to at Disney? Um, well, I would probably say the the carousel. Why was it that so would... much better at, at Universal though? Is there water at that? Huh? One of the one of the Seuss uh, attractions has water. That is one fish, two fish, red so fish, not blue the carousel. fish. Not the carousel. Not the carousel. Yeah, one fish, two fish. That's you got to listen to the instructions or you could get soaked. Okay. But we're not gonna talk about that in case we do. You're really plugging right that now. future uh, water ride. I don't even segment. know if we're gonna do it. All right. Well, you we have might to do get it now. canceled before that. <laughs> we we're on the verge. No, we're not. I hope not. We don't know. Dustin says yes. So. Well, I'm gonna trust Dustin. Um, All right. So. Should, uh, should we wrap it up? Yeah, I, okay. I think we should wrap it up because that's kind of all the basics, and we've had fun. You know, it's been a it's been a wonderful ten episodes. <laughs> I it feel like you're turning like, into Carol Burnett. It seems like it just started. Uh, it seems like it just started back in January, and hey, maybe it, it has. Did. But um, it's been a wild ride, and all right, I'm, we're not we're not ending it. I, I'm glad that people could take this adventure with us. So uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thank we'll you. See you next time.